do start. Um, just like to respectfully acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the lands where we gather um, across Queensland and beyond. Um, pay respect to the elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge the important roles that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples play in relation to land, sky and waterways used for outdoor activities. Um, I'm in Brisbane, or Mianjin, on Yagara country, which is a place of the Jagara and Turrbal peoples. So I just saw Laurie's just popped in from <laughs> Darug country in, um, in New South Wales. So welcome Laurie. Thanks, and um, welcome to everyone. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge funding provided by Queensland Government, um, which is about supporting outdoor activities in general right across Queensland, uh, but also this funding that they provide to Outdoors Queensland, um, which helps us do our work. Um, yeah, so, and we do acknowledge the work that different government departments and ministers do in relation to outdoor activities. Well, I think we're quite a um, broad cross portfolio world in the world of outdoors. Um, uh, but we specifically deal a fair bit with um, the team at Sport and Recreation uh, within the Department of Tourism, Innovation and Sport. So, so this is our fourth episode of Coffee and Conversation for 2023. My name's Dom Courtney. I'm um, the Executive Officer at Outdoors Queensland. Our co-host today is Mark Squires, our Operations Manager who is um, deserting us for a nice, well-deserved break um, after today. So Mark's um, making the big effort on his last day for three and a bit months um, to join us for today's session. So thanks, mate. Um, uh, I'd like to welcome everyone uh, to, for joining us. Um, as I said before, the recordings are available on our website, um, but feel free to ask questions, comments as we go along today. Um, appreciate that. Bit of an agenda there. We'll quickly go through a bit of COVID-19 stuff, but it's actually quite nice that we don't have to spend a large chunk of these sessions on COVID-19 as much as we used to. Um, we'll go through a few other things, uh, but if you want to add anything as we go along, yeah, please do. And as I usually say, um, if you want to suggest any topics for deeper discussion in future sessions, I normally say, please contact me or Mark, but maybe just contact me for the next little while. So um, yeah, please do that. But um, in relation to the world of COVID protocols and requirements, the best news is our traffic light system's still at green. Um, the, um, that still uh, means there's low rates of community transmission. Queensland's not in a COVID-19 wave but it doesn't mean we don't have to take any protocols. So it still talks about this. The main message there is still stay at home when you're sick um, and stay up to date with your vaccinations. Um, and then take a rapid antigen test if you actually get symptoms of COVID. So yeah, I think they're the key pieces on that one. Um, yeah, so um, any comments, queries, questions? I think we've dealt with it enough. Um, but we can go into it in more depth if we need to. That's still on the government website about all those little drawings that we've seen a million times. So, yeah. Um, but I think the key one is if you if you crook, stay home and do a test. So, um, which is probably a good message to continue to push out there. And the Education Queensland COVID rules and protocols. Um, again, that website was last updated just before term one started this year. So I think it was the 17th of January, I think it says on their website, hasn't changed. So um, it still does say you've got to do a risk assessment before you go on excursions and camps. Um, doesn't say that it, it just says you've got to have consideration of the risks. And I think that's pretty standard for any activity that any school ever does. So um, yeah, it, it, that's still there on their website. I like to give it a little, check every now and again just in case it changes and um, I'll certainly be letting people know if it does. So, yes. All right, um, our annual general meeting, um, I just, just wanted, that was held on the 15th of March. Quick recap there from the outcomes, we did send out a bulletin after it, but um, Fiona Coppin and Beck Fox were re-elected as directors, um, which is great. 
and a big thanks uh, to both Fiona and Beck for standing again as directors. Uh, but also Gillian Duncan was elected as an honorary life member. Um, Gillian has made significant contributions to outdoor activities, but particularly mountain biking, and it was really awesome to see Gillian elected. So congratulations to Gillian. A big thanks I should go to all the work Gillian's done over many years in relation to access to spaces and um, and appropriate um, riding and other activities, but also, I guess, a thank you after the AGM to the directors who volunteer the time on, on our board to provide oversight and direction to the organisation and also to all the members who attended or provided proxies. So it was great to see. Uh, just on sport and rec funding, I just wanted to flag on that one um, that um, the, 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 a lot of the programs they've, they've had on there, we've spoken about them before. There's one that they've just opened in the last uh, couple of weeks, which is First Nations Sport and Recreation Program. Um, that one, there's a link on that web page, it's on the page there, but it's all about increasing physical activity levels of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples um, in non-discrete communities. And what they're, they're, they can basically can fund organisations to coordinate and facilitate um, physical activity opportunities. So, it, and if you, you, it's worth having a look at because it, it's not just funding for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander businesses and organisations, it's also for non-profit organisations in general. And I think some local government um, can actually apply for it too. So it's worth having a look at the guidelines on their website. Um, and it's all about um, increase, reducing barriers to participation in physical activity. So it is worth a look. I just wanted to flag that one because it's out there, but the best thing is probably to contact Sport and Rec and get some more information from them if you're interested in, in applying for that one. Um, very quickly, the domestic commercial vessel review that we've been um, talking about probably feels like for a long time. I think it was since January, but um, or since February, we were talking about it in our sessions. But we, as the Outdoor Council of Australia, um, and including Laurie as in her role with Outdoors New South Wales and on the board of Outdoor Council of Australia, has done a lot of work on this. Um, we recently met with the independent panel that's conducting the review um, into the um, domestic commercial vessel situation. Um, it was a really productive meeting and a big thanks to all involved. Um, the panel is gonna re release an updated report shortly and they'll provide a further opportunity for feedback on that report. So uh, big thanks to everyone who provided input, completed the survey that we did, but also um, I just wanted to flag that, that we will get that out there again once that review comes along. I think we're gonna get a good outcome out of that process. It's just a matter of um, us staying on top of it and making sure that our issues are understood and considered in that space. So, yeah. Um, any questions on that one? Sorry, I'll keep rolling along. I'm sort of knocking over a few other things early, but if there's any questions, feel free. Uh, next, I'd like to... Um, hand over to Laurie. Um, Outdoors New South Wales ACT are hosting the Outdoor Industry Summit at Lennox Head um, in northern New South Wales. It's almost good enough to be Queensland, but it just fell short of the line um, from 28th to 30th of June. So I'll hand over to Laurie, the CEO of Outdoors New South Wales, to provide some more info on the, on the summit. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, we wanted to... Um have a, 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 I suppose, a, an opportunity for the industry to come together on some of the hard-hitting conversations, hence why it's called a summit and not a conference. Um, you, we're going to get some of the, the key executive um, directors um, of some of the government departments that operate public land to come along and hear from us and also we get to hear from them on some of the things that they're working through where our industry can either be involved or benefit from. So um, the summit is certainly um, coming together beautifully. I'm, I can't wait to release the program because I think it's something that from what I've seen, the, the outdoor 
other industry hasn't seen before. Uh, we're starting off with a, a keynote speaker by um, Mark McCrindle. Now, if you don't know Mark McCrindle, he's a bit synonymous with his research um, background. He has a, um, uh, a, an agency that focuses on social demography um, and trends, but has done a hell of a lot of work in the education sector, as well as the not-for-profit. So he's combining all of his background on his research and pulling together what the outdoor industry needs to know to set itself up for the next three to five years. So it's handing you on a silver platter some of the biggest trends and um, challenges, I suppose, that the environment brings us, but also what the opportunities are outside of that. So um, it's at a very good price too, thanks to our sponsors. And I have to thank Destination New South Wales uh, for their support in bringing it up there. We know that the Northern Red Rivers region of New South Wales has been hit by many um, challenges. So we're delighted to bring it up there and, and hopefully give you guys the benefit of it as well by being a bit closer to you. So um, I've offered Dom um, the ability to tap into the membership rate um, through anyone who's a member of Outdoors Queensland as well. So I'll let um, them dis uh, disseminate the link, which will get you access to the $250 per person price. It is normally $450. Um, up until the 5th of Ma uh, May, you'll be able to get the $250 rate. So, um, yeah, look forward to having as many of you there as possible because I think everyone needs to benefit from this sort of collection of brains in one room as well as uh, the opportunity to network with one another. So just a quick snapshot, though, the 28th is just a welcome cocktail party. It happens at 5.30 and then the, the days are the 29th and 30th, which is a Thursday, Friday. So Thanks, Laurie. Again, to spend in Lennox Head. <laughs> Terrific. And I tested out the link to make sure it worked yesterday when I booked my ticket, and it did. So thank you for that, and thanks for the discount. Um, so that's applicable to any outdoors Queensland members can access the um, the, the discounted rate for those um, early bird tickets until the 5th of May, so a few weeks. Yeah, so thank you very much for that, Laurie. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I think I'll turn up. So I'm actually going to drop your um your IQ level, the average IQ once I get there. But <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll increase the average number of dad jokes. So that's oh, that's how I'm for that. So yeah. You and Mark, yeah. between the two of you, I think we'll we'll have it done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions for Laurie or about the summit? No, all good. Thanks, Dom. I might yep. disappear if that's all right. I've got a few other things to take my attention away today. So I no wish you all, all the best. And I uh, hope to talk to you all soon. Right on. Bye. Take care. Bye. Uh, the next one I've just had on the list um, is the, um, the Brisbane 2032 Legacy Plan Consultation. So um, this the draft legacy plan is scheduled for release during April. Um, I actually attended the um, the legacy forum uh, towards the end of March, which seems like a long time ago, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, um, along with uh, quite a few other people from Queensland's outdoors world and the sport and rec world, obviously. But it was a really positive day, which was all aimed at shaping what this Brisbane 2032 legacy plan and the actual legacy of this major event will look like. Um, the big focus was about the benefits to society now and into the future and the plan itself, they're talking about the legacy through to 2042, not just up until the event, they're talking about the 10 years beyond that, what the Olympic and Paralympic Games can mean for Brisbane, South East Queensland, Queensland, Australia even. So it's, it's pretty interesting what they're looking at um, and I think I'm really interested to see what's going to be included in the draft plan and then there'll be opportunities for the community to provide feedback on that draft plan as well so we'll keep on pushing it out there part of it there was a couple of really interesting ideas that were thrown out about it and this came out in some of the correspondence after the um, legacy forum about one of the great ideas was, well, it's probably three big ones that I'm happy, to, you know, was um, they talked about having a legacy forest, literally a interconnected forest across all of Southeast Queensland with trails, et cetera, that would be accessible as a, I don't know how they would manage it and how it would work, but that was one of the things that was talked about on the day. 
they talked about a volunteering passport to encourage more people to volunteer in organisations, whether that it could be recreation organisations in the lead up to the games and build up a, you know, a number of volunteering credits so that then you can qualify to be a volunteer at the Olympic and Paralympic Games. So they're talking about those sort of things of community connections in that space. So it, it's some pretty interesting stuff that they were they were really talking about out of what this might be for, for our society. So, yeah, so we'll let you know once that um, the plan's out too, and it should be in the next couple of weeks, I think. Any questions, comments? Oh. Uh, Bill, are they going to have sufficient resources to get blue and other cards for volunteers? Yeah, it's certainly some of those systems are going to going to be under some pressure. And I think that's where it'd be interesting if you're already a volunteer for other organisations, then I, I imagine it will make things a lot easier if they've already got the resources and the systems in place. So that's a part of that discussion of what it might look like. And I guess we'll see what they need to do to consider those sort of options. So, yeah. Um, I don't think we've got Joe Wallace from Matana uh, property services on the call, have we? No. Um, oh, well, I was going to, we might, Joe might join us next time. So Joe's, um, I'll give you a brief glimpse, but they're an uh, um, Indigenous owned property services company that provide commercial cleaning and property services. And um, he reached out to me through our wrap and uh, asked if he could um, speak to the group. So he, he might join us next time. Um, it's just about the services that they offer. Um, so we might. Leave that one for now. Um, the, we've spoken a few times about um, the National Centre for Outdoor Risk and Readiness, uh, which Outward Bound Australia are setting up. Um, they ran a webinar, I think it was the 25th of March, it was towards the end of March, um, and they're seeking feedback on the proposed activities of NatCor through a survey, an online survey. The link's on the screen there. Um, and there's also, they've set up a, a standalone website for NatCor, as it's called in for short. Um, so the survey's gonna be available to the end of April, but to complete it, you really need to watch a recording of the webinar, which is on their website and on YouTube, and then complete the survey as you go along. So. What they really want is industry feedback on what NatCor could, should be, and how it might do that. So it's certainly worth um, having a look at it and providing them some feedback on what it what it is. So it's primarily set up in relation to risk and readiness in relation to climate uh, change, climate action. Uh, but they, they're asking about some opportunities in that space. They're also running a series of workshops in relation to um, critical incident management um, and there, there will be more information on that um, uh, closer to um, uh, as, they, as they roll out. I think the, the two events are in, um, in Brisbane in July, so we'll get some more information out there once all, that's, uh, all the details are, are provided to us. So any questions on that one? Did anyone hear? I know Mark and I did, but did anyone else join that um, the webinar? Nope. No, it's worth a look, like the recording on the website of the webinar, it gives all the details of the different aspects of what the um, this centre could do. They've got some federal government funding. Um, so yeah, have a look at it and um, yeah, feel free to complete the survey. Uh, Danny, I can send you the link. Uh, it's just a de separate link uh, to get the discounted price for the um, Outdoor Industry Summit at, um, at Lennox Head. So I can just put a note here and I'll, I'll send it through to you. And that is you, Danny, not Benoni pretending to be you today. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> okay, mate. <laughs> right. Actually, Tom, can I just jump in there? Yes, is, is that the process for others wanting to get a, a, the discount ticket as well to contact you? Yeah, that's probably the easiest way. Um, yeah, it's, it's just it's a weird one because they can't give us the login to their member portal because it's only each of their members. So they've set up a separate web link that gets for members of Outdoors Queensland mm -hmm. can go straight through into the um, into the this special page they've set up with the 
discounted rate. Um, yeah, but I can I can send it out. So if anyone else wants it, please let me know. It is a good discount. I think Laurie said normally four fifty for the two day conference, and it's two fifty as an early bird price until the fifth of May. So yeah, for the summit, I should call it that. It's not a conference; it's a summit. Laurie will she might watch the recording. I'll get in trouble. So um, I can send that out, mate. I'll do that after this meeting. No worries. Um, and if anyone else wants it, please yeah, just let me know. Um, cool. Yeah. So on the NatCore, yeah, it is worth doing that survey and um, and completing it. Um, Yarra Bilba Trail Fest is coming up um, at the end of April. Um, so lend lease. This is it's a bit of a funny one because we don't usually have a lot of engagement with property developments, the developers, but. Um, Yarra Bilba have had a bit to do with this, particularly through the Nature Play program, um, but they, they, they have some significant trail connections from the Yarra Bilba development uh, into uh, Plunkett Conservation Park. Uh, there's a national park there, Wick, Wickham National Park and Wickham Timber Reserve as well. So the Yarra Bilba, Yarra Bilba Trail Fest, um, there's three different trail runs there. Uh, 5.1k, 11.4, and 18.2 kilometres. Um, I just wanted to let you know that that they, sorry, Lend Lease, the developer, are really keen to speak to any organisations who are looking at planning events um, that use the trails in and around Yarrabilba. So we can put you in touch with the right person at Lend Lease if you want to contact us. You can just send me an email um, if that applies to you because. The, the key part of that, I think, is they are looking at how they might do it better uh, as the property developer with connections into the trails and they want to understand what outdoor organisations need in that space. Um, and for this, for the Yarrabilda Trail Fest, that's actually been organised by the Trail Co who do a lot of good events. So, um, and there's a lot of info on their website. So it's worth checking it out if you're interested in that one. But if you do want to contact uh, Lendlease, let us know and um, I can give you their contact details. Um, another, I'm not going to say conference, a, a, a conference and expo, this one's um, Health and Wellbeing Queensland. Um, it's, uh, they're, they're calling it a better choice conference and expo, which is at the Pat Rafter Arena at the Queensland Tennis Centre in Brisbane on the 30th of May. Um, so it's all about um, healthier food and drinks in school, sport and recreation and healthcare. So, but they're specifically, they're really keen to have people from sport and rec, um, and they've asked us to promote it, um, to talk about creating, as it says on the screen, healthy food environments for all Queenslanders. So. Um, we've had a little bit to do with them in relation to they're developing some um, improved guidelines for healthy food for sport and recreation clubs. Um, and it's probably more in the, the sporting world where they're trying to make a shift away from some of the typical canteen foods that you might get if you go to a sporting event um, into more healthier options. Um, and We've been providing a bit of feedback on that, on how they might be able to do that um, to help recreation organisations as well. But I think, you know, this, this one is also about potential opportunities to meet up with um, suppliers who specialise in healthy food and drink, um, understanding what other people are doing in relation to healthy options in that space um, and different ways to incorporate healthy changes um, in your in your space, so it's a it's a one day uh, conference and expo. I think it's the princely sum of about fifty dollars to attend, uh, but it might be worth going to, or even um, you know if you're if you're involved in food providing food. Um, I know school camps particularly might be interested in in options for um, the catering side of your organisation as well. Um, there might be some good information there. There's plenty of info on their website about it. Um, so if you want to have a look at that, yeah, it's certainly worth having a, a look and um, seeing if it's worth attending for the day. So I just wanted to let you know about that one. So it is at the 
at the tennis center at um at tennis in brisbane um i don't think there'll be a lot of tennis being played there that day somehow all right we've ripped through everything um partly as a result of um my not pausing to breathe too often. Um, <laughs> um, if there's any comments or questions, I, I, we haven't got anyone from the inside the outhouse here today. Um, they, um, I missed their last session, but I know they've got another one coming up shortly. So um, keep your eyes peeled on their their website, their resources, um, and um, yeah, it's worth attending their sessions. Um, I also wanted to promote like our website and our e-bulletins and the social media. Um, if you're interested, feel free to, to follow our social media. Uh, I'd like to hope you're all subscribed for our e-bulletins and you check out our website resources every now and again. We're actually right now about to start on a redevelopment of our website as well. And the idea behind that is about um, making the resources that are on there more accessible for more people. So that's going to be a big project um, that we're, we're looking at on how we can do that. and. Um, and get that out there. So that's a bit of a piece of work um, that's happening behind the scenes. Um, until we're ready, the existing website will continue as is, and then we'll um, hopefully make the magical switch over as we get there. So yeah, if you've, got, if you've got any questions, if you've got any comments on our website, feel free to let me know about that too, because um, it is an important uh, repository for a lot of our information. Um, yeah, Dom, if I can jump in too, yeah, just to, on that. Yeah, any feedback, any ideas, any thoughts on you know what it is that we could do better on the website, the things that are missing from our website, the things that you would like to see there uh, would be very useful at this stage. So we can yep. start planning to include those things or get rid of them if they're, if they're stuff that's just uh, a waste of our time and yours. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, mate. Um, and I've just highlighted that consultation there to the, um, the Brisbane 2032 legacy once the draft plans released um, and also that NAPCOR survey um, for you to complete. Um, does anyone else have any questions, comments? No? Righto. Well, the last thing for today is a big thanks for coming, but um, the next Coffee Conversation is going to be the 5th of May. Um, and I wanted to thank all of the Outdoors Queensland members, volunteers and staff who contribute to what we do. But today, a big thanks um, to Mark for co-hosting. And as we said earlier, it's his last day before heading off on long service leave. So don't tell anyone, especially Mark, but I pinched a few of his images from his <laughs> website. Um, so I popped them up there to, to do that. Um, there are some pretty nice photos on there, Mark. You made it hard for me to only pick three. So um, yeah, I just, just wanted to thank Mark for all the work that he has done for many years for CORF and Outdoors Queensland, but also for the outdoor community. So thank you, mate. I hope you have a great break from work um, and not having to put up with my awesome jokes for a little while and a, an awesome holiday. So um, yeah, thanks, Dom. Yeah, nice pictures you've chosen there. I'm not so sure about the bit of art on the right-hand side, though. Oh, I like that, mate. That's awesome, that picture. dodgy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do like your furrowed brow because I think you're concentrating on hitting the the button rather than actually smiling but um yeah there's also a very cold wind that day I remember as well so all uh, right that's what caused the furrowing is maybe it? yeah yeah but yeah thank you mate um, a big thanks for for all the work that you do so I very thought good. you'd like the fact that I picked that one so <laughs> um yeah. um but yeah has anyone else got anything else otherwise we can finish up early and you can spend half an hour filling out surveys if you like or anything else that you might have to do so okay going once going twice going um Thank i you. do have one thing yeah, sorry oh, really? oh, Good. the auction here <laughs> that you built the suspense beautifully <laughs> i was trying to find the button to unmute myself um, yep. So we are still looking for another representative on our sport and rec reference group um, for Brisbane North. So if anyone has any recommendations, if you want to send it through to me or Dave, um, that would be good. Thank no you. No problem at all. Kirsten. Do you want to pop your um, your contact details just in the chat? Yeah, I will do. Yep. That would be terrific. 
All righty. Yeah, so um, yeah, that'd be great. If anyone, so just for the North, Brisbane North region um, from, um, for the Sport and Rec um, inclusive, sorry, inclusive Sport and Recreation group, reference group. Um, yeah, please get in touch with Kirsten. That'd be great. Thank you for that. Um, well, we'll finish up there. We get half an hour back in our lives, which is never a bad thing. So um, Mark, have a great break. Um, after you finish today, of course, don't, don't even consider finishing a minute earlier than you would otherwise. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone. Um, please be kind to the planet, be kind to others and be kind to yourselves. We'll see you next time.